All right, we back. My expert opinion, the greatest show in the world. world, 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 world. That shit just so magical. I love that shit, man. It's great. Hit that like, hit that share, let everybody know you in here. Don't cost you no paper unless you was a mother. Hater, 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 hater. Get him, champ. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yo, you see how you just fell off? Like, you I just fell off. off, bro. You fell, fell off, off son. I fell off? Yeah, you fell off, son. I fell off. You fell off. You want what me to happened? pick it back up? Yeah, pause. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, for the <laughs> How is that a pause, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Why you Come stop on, doing the beatboxing? No, bro? I like, told you I wait for the bat song. <laughs> he threw throw the it up. He threw the Wu Tang sign. My nigga, I ain't never, I ain't I need never do this. He threw the Wu Tang sign. During the episode, I need that like, hall you can. I need the hall you can. Hit that like, hit that shit. Let everybody know you ain't here. Don't cost you no paper unless you's a mother. Hater, 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 hater. Don't be one of those. I know. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like and the share. Leave it in the comments. Share should keep doing this. That's my favorite one. Oh, this is the best one. That's the best one. I like that. I like that one. My nigga Chan. Ah, Mac, what up? Salute King. Ah, Wrinkle God. Word. YKTV. Magazine new issue out. Shout out to Jim Jones. Shout out to Mano. This is dope. Shout out to you got Chan. the lobby boys in there. Yeah. Shout out to my bro man. Yeah, this this is dope. This is Fire. dope. Good. Thank you. Good. Fire. Fire. Thank you, Splat brother. murder. Oh, can I get that magazine? Oh, love you, man. Splat murder. Oh, you know my brother. But your man over here stole Big Brooklyn from me. I ain't gonna hold you. Your man right here. Shout out to the YKTV magazine. Shout out to my brother Manos. Best style forever, but your man right here stole Big Brooklyn from me. It's a gap fact. Right. Shout out to YKTV. I also want to shout out um, Lakey the Kid. Got the Street Bible coming out soon. Mm. Yeah, so stay tuned Lakey. for this. It's full of all the fun facts of street life in New York City. Okay. Along mm. with hip hop. It's actually a very good read, so go check this out. Lakey's different. It's my copy. What you doing? <laughs> ah, Chip. Everything's well, everything's good. I have no complaints. I'm here, I'm free, and I'm going to stay free. I'm glad to be around some amazing people, and it's going to stay like that. That's right. Uh, straight to the point. So, That's it. Straight to the point. Straight, straight, the point. Point. straight magic. Now, um, before there was power, the streets were turned up. The YouTube streets were turned up by an independent show that was doing colossal numbers. Colossal numbers. And it actually spawned a whole movement of web series here in New York City and across the nation. Now, we haven't heard much from these guys in a while, but what they've done is still reign throughout entertainment. And you can see that with the, the Power Book series and, and mm -hmm. how far that's, that's going, how many different variations is broken off from that and we got the guys in the building tonight that started all that so money and violence is in the building big brooklyn 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 Yo, okay, well, Kyle Laster, Leon Zogar. <laughs> 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 you remind me of Africa a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your boy, B.R. Uh, Molly. You heard? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's good, my guys? We yeah, good, yeah. we good, man. We good, you know? Yeah, Still out nice. here pushing this thing to the next level. Right. I ain't give up on a dream. Everybody thought we did, but, you know, <clears throat> about to make this next move. Mm -hmm. Now, we was in the studio. Um, how long ago? Like this was like months? well, like six months, six seven months ago. Was it right? Six months. We was in the studio. Wood Harris. Well, well, yeah. That's Wood, my dude. Now, look, y'all don't know it, but <laughs> Wood Harris got an album that's going blow. Fire! <laughs> fire! Yeah. He's fire! Yeah. I didn't even expect. It. I was like, oh, shit, oh, this nigga really rap, yo. This is crazy. He ain't know, huh? Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. Um, but we were talking about it then. Yeah. Um, what what what's the next step? Where do you take it from there? Um, 
Well, the next step right now, right, is we're about to re-release the first two seasons on Tubi, mm -hmm. um, remastered and re-edited. So everybody knows, like, season one, when I did Money and Violence, that was the first time I ever stepped foot behind a camera. Like, I literally didn't even know what color grading was till the 12th episode. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody thought I had got a new camera, but it was just, I'm like, yo, this color grading thing. This is <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, same camera. <laughs> yeah, same camera, you know? But um, right. we re-released the season one and two on Tubi, remastered, re-edited also, even season one, because season one, the episodes were like 20 minutes, 18 minutes, 22 minutes each. Each episode is going to be an hour long. Nice. Um, so the first season is 11 episodes and the second season is still, you know, 12 hour long episodes. And, um, you know, it's been six or seven years, man, since people have been really able to access the show on any platform that wasn't behind a paywall. Right. You know, so now putting it back out there for the people, it's a whole generation that I feel missed out on it. Right. Um, and I think that Money and Violence is such a big part of the culture. Like that, that show was special. And it's not just because I created and wrote it. It's just because, you know, my whole goal for the show was literally to have a vehicle the same way that I had OGs on my block kicking nuggets of wisdom to us when we was growing up. The show was basically that vehicle to allow me to speak to the younger generation in their language because I felt it was something that was necessary at the time. And I think that things have gotten even worse, man. So... Yeah. I think the streets need this. Yeah, I think so yeah. too. Um, mm -hmm. Now, what inspired this whole thing? That, oh, this is a gag question. Look, I, I, you I, see them, right? You see them, right? No, I see them, right? I ain't yeah. saying nothing. Your man, what? So what inspired? That's his favorite <laughs> shit. Yeah, That's shit. his favorite I learned shit. I that from you, though. Yeah, it's all good. It's so good. Um, but how did, how did the show even come to be? Because at this time, there was nothing like it. There was nothing on the net that was like that. We had the wire, but mm -hmm. of course, these are. This is a show that, that had a, a whole uh, production, production team behind it. Yeah. What made you say, "Let's pick up a camera and shoot our own shit and just put it out to the world"? All right. So, I mean, let's start with the title, right? Money and violence. It's something that I, I had been saying for years, right? Um, art imitates life, and it's something I have been saying for years. To my right hand man, I always used to say the only two things in this world that people respect is money and violence, you know, and it's because if you want somebody's attention, either you want to show up, show them the bread. Right. Or you want to hit them over the head. And mm -hmm. but at the same time, I also think that money and violence totally describes the entire mindset of capitalism. I could have did a show about the insurance industry and called it money and violence. I could have did a show about the hospital industry and called it money and violence. The inspiration for the show was actually inspired by, by my life itself because before money and violence at the time, like my life was just so crazy that every time certain things will happen, I tell my man like, yo, if we could do a reality show about our life, like this, like people would be glued to the TV and he's like, yeah, and we'd go to jail. <laughs> you know? um, and after, Years of that, like I just came up with the idea, like, but what if I scripted it? You know what I mean? And 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 I just got my peoples together. And one day I woke up and I literally was laying in my bed in the morning, like I usually do, just thinking about, okay, what's 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 the next thing? Like, what's to come? You know, what what is it that I haven't done before that I'd like to do? And the idea came up that I never created a film. So originally, Money and Violence was supposed to be a feature, you know. Um, so I came to my people and I'm like, yo. I want to do a movie. And they're like, you want to do a movie? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, all right, so write a couple of scenes and let's see what it do. So I wrote a couple of scenes. I bought a camera, bought a mic. We went out one day, shot it. Um, I took the footage back to the crib. I had YouTube on my desktop while I had the editing software on my laptop because I learned how to edit off of YouTube. Right. And um, when I edited the first scene, like what blew my mind was exactly what I saw in my head was what I saw on the screen. Like it looked like a real scene. So I'm like, oh, my God, like this could really happen, you know. Right. And um, from there, one scene became two on and on and on until that became an episode until we had 25 episodes for the first season. And the next thing you know, we get an approach by Sony. We get an approach by Endemol. We get an approach by Lionsgate, right. you know, but the inspiration for the show, in all honesty, was just... I was tired of the world thinking 
that the people in our neighborhoods do crimes out of enjoyment. I was tired of that. Like I wanted people to be able to, to get a chance to go home with the same dudes that they cross the street to avoid, to understand that they go home and hug and kiss their kids, yeah. just like you. you like have. these niggas ain't animals. That's you, what I you know what I mean? They, they, they do what they do out of lack of resources. And if they had the opportunity to do anything else, bro, they, they would. Right. So you handpicked your whole cast? No casting call. All y'all niggas from nope. Flatbush? Nah, 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 nah. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, why you said it like that? Niggas said, oh, hell no. Um, <laughs> my, my, my cast was literally just people that were around me, you know. Friends right. of friends. He was around me. He came through a, a, a high school friend of a dude that was close to me. He was somebody, we just used to follow each other on Instagram. Right. And when I thought of this scammer <laughs> character, <laughs> yo, <laughs> I was like, this dude is the perfect oh, fit. You understand right. what oh, I'm saying? Right. And I reached right. out to him and I'm like, yo, bro, let's, like, let's, let's make this happen. I'm doing this show. You and what's like up? I'm going to give you an opportunity. Bro, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Not here. Don't say that on here, man. You're going to get a bunch of slack. You're going to get a bunch of slack about this shit. That's crazy. So, all right. So, so you got the cast together. <laughs> How authentic are the stories? And I'm not, I'm not trying to get nobody in trouble. I know y'all are like, that's a flag question. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I know it's based on on, 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 on a lifestyle that, that, that you know some some people around you may have been living or or added to the stories or I mean, I'll tell you this. Um, way after Money and Violence, Money and Violence led to me actually writing for television, right? Mm -hmm. I've, I've written on Godfather Harlem. I've written on American Gods, amongst other shows. And what I've come to learn is no story in television is, even a true story is not a true story. And the reason being is because as much as we think our lives are exciting, when you put it down on paper in the script, it's not that exciting. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you got to tweak oh, it for yeah. entertainment purposes. Yes. Yes. Um, and it's the same thing with money and violence. Like money and violence has pulled a lot from my life. It's pulled a lot from the lives of the people that were around me, but in the same breath, a lot of it is also tweaked for entertainment purposes to give you the best Shock episode that. possible because every story, in order to keep your audience entertained, there's a structure right. you know, that has to be put in play in our lives, doesn't play out in a structure. So you got to tweak it. You know what I mean? You got to have turning points. You got to have climaxes. Um, so although it's inspired by true events, mm -hmm. um, it isn't all true. Right. Now, you said it was supposed to be a feature. Mm -hmm. What made you decide, okay, we're gonna do this week to week? The first two months, we had about 18 minutes of footage. First two months? First two months, we had about 18, 18 minutes. minutes of footage. And I was like, this shit is taking too long, yeah. right? Because I wanted it to be about an hour and 45 minute feature. And also, when I really thought about it, I was like, damn, as much jewels as I have to give, as much as I want to teach, an hour and 45 minutes is not enough real estate to do so. Right. Um, so I came to them and I'm like, look, forget the feature. Let's do a web series. And they're like, what's that? <laughs> right. So I'm like, you know, episodic television, same thing you see on television, but just on YouTube, YouTube yeah. on the internet. Right. So they're like, okay. <clears throat> So what's going to be our first episode? I said, the 18 minutes we have right now. They said, when are we going to drop it? I said, next week. So and they're happen? like, but what are we going to do after that? I said, every week we'll have six days for me to write, shoot, and edit another episode and put it out. And they're like, yeah, you got to be kidding me. We did that for seven months. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll add on to that. The one thing about him, that procrastinating here with it. So jumping yeah. out the window, that was the best thing. Because we would have sat on that for years mm -hmm. to come. Snowy days, we don't want to go outside. Hot days, we don't, but once we dropped it and we saw the feedback. Pressure was on us. We had no choice. Like, so he, he'll he write the script. We'll get the script that Friday on set, all of us. And then we have to film until Sunday. <laughs> and then he'll edit everything by Tuesday and drop it and then redo that again, like he said, for seven months straight. Seven Blizzards. Months. Doesn't matter. Doesn't well, matter. We outside. Yeah, I mean, outside. The, the hardest part is out the way. Once you start. Yes. It started moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And once you started to see the response. Once your views started to get into the hundred thousands, like, what was that like? I'm gonna tell you a story, right? So 
at the time when we started Money and Violence, I still had one leg in the streets. Um, and I was, I was taking a trip out of town, right? I think this was like episode five, right? <laughs> I was taking a trip out of town to go handle some BI and, and I stop at the rest stop and I'm going to the bathroom <clears throat> and the dude stops me. He's like, yo, you the dude. Mind you, I'm dirty, like homie. I'm, I'm who? <laughs> right. You know? So he's like, yo, you you the dude from the YouTube show. So I'm like, nah, bro, you bugging. I must look like somebody. Right? So he's like, nah, I know it's you. I'm like, nah, 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 it ain't me. <laughs> he walk off. You know, I go about my business, I do what I do, and I come back and I sit my partner down. And I'm like, we gotta stop. And he's like, we gotta stop. I'm like, yeah. I said, bro, my entire life I've been looking for a way out. You know what I mean? And I feel like I'm at the fork in the road. And if I don't pick one path, it's going to fuck up both of them. So and he's like, but what are we going to do for bread? I said, whatever we got staff, we're going to live off of that. We're going to figure it out. And he's like, yo, bro, you're bugging. And I'm like, nah, my nigga. Um, and the reason being is because, like, even when I was doing, when, when I was doing what I was doing in the streets, like, I've lived long enough, bro, to know that that shit don't end well. Right. And I've always felt that, yo, the more money I made, the more I felt that I was closer to the end coming. Right. You know, and, and, and I just wanted right. a way out. I, I, just, I just wanted a way out. And it's like, you know, and, and he asked me, bro, what are we going to do for paper? I said, my nigga, we roll the dice every fucking day. Why can't we roll the dice with this? Yep. You know, and we decided... You know, he always says this. He's like, nigga, I respect you so much because I know what you walked away from. Cool. To this day, what I what I made in the streets, I've never cool. made nothing close to in film. You understand? But it's it's so crazy because later on, like my daughter's mother died. And when my daughter was 13, like she had to come live with me. And I was so happy that years ago I made that decision. <laughs> and it's simply because like, like even when my when when my daughter came to live with me, the only thing that kept standing out to me was I'm all this little girl has. I cannot risk my freedom. I cannot risk my life. You understand? And I'm just glad that I'm in a position. Now I've placed myself in a position to to be fed off of something legit and no longer to have to do that. You know. Someplace that guy is gonna be watching this and you're gonna be like, I knew it was that nigga. <laughs> oh yeah. I knew that's that happening. That's happening. Uh, uh, that's happening. That's happening, that's happening bro. That's happening. You know, what was it like for the rest of y'all? Like when people started to stop you in the streets and you realized like you had something real. It was like episode like seven. By that time, no, first off, the first episode. Back then, Instagram was only like 15 seconds you could post. Yeah, right. yeah, so it was yeah. like a little skit that somebody did. I forgot his name then. But he, he did like, like a Obama. Little, Jay Obama. He Jay did a Obama. Shout out to Jay Obama, oh, man. Oh, shit. Jay Obama. I got to give him his flowers. He a best star, nigga. He a Kosciuszko, yeah. nigga. Shout, Shout out to Jay Obama. Jay Obama. Yeah, listen to this one. Yeah. Shout out to Jay Obama. Jay Obama held us down with the memes. I was doing this That's my guy. Before memes was a meme, he was making memes. He was making memes. So he made a meme of... When Miz shot at the apartment. When, when, when dude was like, shorty got a fat, fat ass, ass and Miz turned around and yeah, that, it hit 1.1 1. 1 million. That shit went viral, yeah. So everybody's like, yo, what show is that? I'm in, under the comments like, oh, that's Marshall. You I'm like, yo, hit us up, nigga. Yeah. Like, you know, you back then, you see huh? a million views. It's like, whoa. But that was just that clip. But then by episode seven, I think that's when Fab, Fab shouted out yeah. in the freestyle. People freestyle, hit my phone like, yo, uh, Fab. So that's when I started knowing like, oh, nah, this is really, really taking off. Like, and, you, and, you know, and you know, what I love the most because... I believe that the success of Money and Violence was a collective. And when I say it was a collective, what I mean by that, I think everybody played a part. Everybody that rushed home on a Tuesday night to go watch it, who got their bottle in hand, who got their blunt to sit back, you know, shout out to Fab, shout out to Kiss to put it in these freestyles. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Murder, who was a part of season two. Shout out to Mano, who was a part of season two. Mm -hmm. I think that at a time when the light wasn't really shed on Brooklyn, you know, um, I think money and violence just really brought an energy, you know? Um, but I think what was greatest about the show was I'm not arrogant enough to claim the struggle for us and our own. I always said, 
this story isn't just a Brooklyn story. It isn't just a Harlem story. It isn't a New York story. This is a worldwide story right. in every neighborhood where dudes are struggling and trying to get by and trying to get to that next dollar. And I think that that's another reason why the show was embraced so much. You know what I mean? Because like I always say, the stage is big enough for all of us, man. We all share the same story. We, we're alike in more ways than we're different. Right. You know? That's Money shit. and Violence birthed a lot of other web series after that. Mm -hmm. Project Heat, mm -hmm. The Brooklyn Way, Respect Shout out to the Life. guys. Shout out, to shout out to my, shout out to my, my dudes. Right. And, and if you want me to be, I yo, bro, when I tell you I love, I loved that. And the reason I loved it is I just felt like, yo, we all have a story, mm -hmm. right? And before Money and Violence, we all thought that you had to go to film school. You know, you had to be well-versed. You had to work by other people, other people's standards, right? In order to do that. And, and I love the fact that, you know, we kind of gave people the courage to just say, yo, I got a story and I'm gonna pick up a camera and I'm gonna shoot that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so when I saw the project <clears throat> Heats and when I saw the respect life's coming out, like I loved it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, like, like, look at this, bro. Like, like, we let dudes know that it's more than just sports and music. There's another lane for us, like. Get it. <laughs> like on the rest in peace, Boom P. Yeah, rest in peace to Boom P, man. Yeah. Rest in peace to Definitely Boom Definitely rest in peace to Boom. Um, that's, that's exactly why I created... That's exactly why I created the Urban Web Series Awards. Yes. And I brought every web series together and it wasn't no fighting, no, you know, niggas hating them. Well, niggas hate now, but... <laughs> yeah. It was just a, a good... You know, collective mm -hmm. web series that was together, and we enjoyed that shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yo, yeah. Pop, they go one of the um awards right there. Oh, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Pull that shit out real quick, bro. Hey, yo, and yo, hey, watch yo. Your hey, and you know what's crazy? Oh, yeah. He yeah. gave yeah. he the first support. web that series award, right? Yeah. He you gave us the icon award, and yeah. the crazy thing is, Pop, Pop? what I did in my speech was I included, I included every single other web series I'm on my in my speech. Right. And the reason I did that was because like, yo oh, bro, yeah. yeah, like 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 it ain't just about us, my nigga. It's, it's, it's about That's this whole way. collective of what Thanks we doing, Pop, like, you know what I'm saying? Because we all inspiring all these little kids right. in the hood right. to show them a different way. And I'm in a Brooklyn way about three times, right? <laughs> I said, yeah, fact, but I ain't in money and balance, it's all different. <laughs> 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 hold on, hold on. <laughs> that that no, award right there. It, it. Yo, Pop, I'm on Project Heat. Shout out to Uncasa no, too. Uncasa is a major had, figure. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and the Brooklyn way too. You know what I mean? Shout out <laughs> to Uncasa. No, but I, this is what I, I wanted to say to y'all. I, I want to say to y'all real quick the <laughs> impact that this show had in the prisons. This is a fact. Because it had a super what? impact. Mm -hmm. Like, it had a positive impact and it had a negative of impact, course. unfortunately, right? I right. was in Manhattan House in the Tombs. 2014. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> nah, fuck the tunes. Nah, fuck the tunes. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the niggas in the tunes. Yeah, yeah, fuck the tunes. Hey, fuck the tunes. Not the institution. But it was weird Stay because when I first went in in 2014, fighting my case, um, I seen what was happening as far as niggas trying to get USBs. <laughs> to hook up to the TV to mm. watch oh, y'all show. Never know that. And I was like, yo, what y'all How they watch that again? Like, listen, niggas run down on the COs. Huh. And listen, this is what we need. Oh, We need, we need y'all to bring this USB in with money and balance on it. Wow. Y'all want to oh. keep us calm? Y'all want to make sure we chilling? Make sure that's on the USB. Y'all probably wow. ain't know that. Wow. You understand? Wow. So wow. that wow. shit, wow. nigga. That shit, I got listen, the word. <laughs> <laughs> that shit quelled so much violence oh. amongst rival gangs, amongst mm. niggas from Harlem versus That's the Lower right. East Side, mm -hmm. niggas from Brooklyn, from Manhattan or whatever. Like it quelled so much violence and it also helped of inspire course. niggas inside of course. to yeah. start yeah. writing. Cause niggas be like, yo, champ, pull up to my cell. Yo, I started writing a script. I'm like, nigga, when you start writing a script? <laughs> yo, that money and balance nigga, that nigga did it. So right. you understand? Love, so it had, it had a great it. impact nah, behind nah. the wall as well. That's a yeah, that's that's I ain't know that part now. Nah. That's yeah. beautiful, man. I got calls from jail. Like, yeah, I got calls like, from jail too. Yeah, I got, I got, I got, I got letters, like, calls. Like, like, how are you watching that? this shit? Hold on, chats. Yeah. yeah. Nah, niggas, nah um, niggas are sneaking phones. I want to ask, what, what would you say were the best <laughs> and worst moments during shooting that first season? Um, 
The best moment. The best moment. In all honesty, um, for me, was just sitting back and watching everyone that was involved in the project benefit off the project, right? Like he'll tell, he like out everybody here, he knows me best. I don't like attention. Like that's just not my thing, you know. Um, but when the opportunity started coming, and I would just sit back and. You know, we'd be wherever and I'd see everybody having such a good time. Like that shit used to make me so fucking happy. Um, and it was just simply because like they believed in me and I delivered, you know. Yeah. Um, and also as well, man, it it was it was just um I felt like and I hate this is a cliche, but I hate to say I felt like we were doing God's work. But I just felt like I felt like what we were putting out there. Although all we were doing was really trying to make people understand us, right? Um, and some of it, you could pull negativity from it, right? Because right. a lot of our lives was negative. Right. But if you really went under the surface and you really looked at the root of what this show was about, like you learned from it. The worst, the worst parts of this show. <clears throat> Was how much it changed people. Oh, God. Worse? That was that was that was that was the that was the worst part. Oh, what, what, hold on, because oh, 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 he got a different answer. <laughs> nah, I just don't think that it was it was the worst part because it changed people in positive and negative ways. So I understand it may have changed people in a negative way, but it also changed a lot of people. So what was in the worst? Way. What was the in worst? your opinion? In your opinion, what was the worst? In my part opinion, shooting that first season. I know. Nah, I don't. I don't. What was the worst? Part? Yeah. I don't know. You nah, nah, you I can, you I can tell you. I can <laughs> you tell you, starting starting from the ground up, it's going to get tough. It's going to get rocky. Um, There may be situations where everybody's not getting paid right away. There may be people who are offered an opportunity, and they take the opportunity, and there may be people who were there from the start who felt entitled to a lot more. Mm -hmm. Were those the type of issues that you were running into? But that's what I mean as far as the worst yeah. part of it is how it changed people. Okay. Because you, you have to understand that this show was an extension of me. And when I say it was an extension of me, everybody who was involved were connected to me in some way. You were so the when, I, when I had people that I genuinely loved act like as if I'm on some other shit, right? Simply because people don't understand the responsibility that's on your back when you're the head of this situation. Right. You know, I had a young lady who was a very close friend of mine. Love this girl to death. And it wasn't, you know, it was just simply, she was basically family. But then she would come on set and she would expect special privileges, right? And it's like, cause she was, she was one of the actors. And I'm like, mom, I, I, I can't do that. Simply because like, I'm the one leading this entire thing. I need to treat everybody fairly, you know? Um, and because of that, we parted ways, you know? Mm. And 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 the crazy thing, um, the worst part of it, in all honesty, if I have to say it, which I don't want to say it, I feel like money and violence caused me to lose one of the closest people to me, you know, um, who died, who, who who was murdered, and the reason I say that is because once again, like I told you before, money and violence, we lived our lives a certain way, right. Um, and now, it's, am I allowed to say rest in peace to this person? Yeah, of course. Yes. Re rest, rest in peace. Rest yeah. in peace to my nigga Ya. You rest know, in peace uh, to Yah. And um, we lived our lives a certain way. And we lived our lives a certain way because of the things that we've done in the past, you know. But then what money and violence did was it started making my man get comfortable doing things that he shouldn't have done. Like, he got an Instagram page. And although he didn't show his face on it, it was just... Never. I'm like, yo, bro, you, he would have never done that. Never. But the fact that we were so out in the light, you know, the way I always phrase it is we lived our life in the shadows and we was always <laughs> safe as long as we lived in the shadows. But the second we stepped out into the light, you know, um, and he lost his life behind that. I don't know. I can't tell you the exact reason that he lost his life, but right. I do know as of what I think the reason he lost his life is because we were going to be at an event and he posted it on his page a week or two before 
and he was there. And I don't know whoever came and did what they did still to this day. I have no idea where mm -hmm. it came from, but um, you know, he lost his life that day. Yeah. And uh that's why I always say that there's nothing I could ever gain from this that can ever replace what I lost. Like, right. no way, you know? I do this, I write, because I love to write and all of that, but me and this show, we have a love-hate relationship. And that's because I lost, and I hate to use the word brother because it's so fucking overused these days. Right. But um, I lost a dude that I knew since he was seven years old, and we lived in the same building. You know what I'm saying? That right. we rode fucking huffy bikes together and all of that, you know? Yeah. So that would definitely be the worst thing. R.I.P. to my nigga Yizu, man. Yeah, rest in peace. Uh, yeah. Where, where'd you find the strength to keep going with the show, knowing that the popularity of it caused you to lose your friend? I mean, I, bro, I'm a different type of animal. I want to tell that story, bro. Can no, I tell that, 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 that. RPI, but we was filming. He gets a call. Just it was like snowing, blizzard. I think it's like the last scene. He's like, you see, you could tell he's going through it. So we all like, what's up? He's like, damn, I just heard my mom pass. So I got to run to the hospital. His mom was in the hospital. So he's like, all right, cool. So we like, Fritz is like, all right, everybody pack up. We putting the cameras in. An hour and a half later, he come back like, yo, what y'all doing? He's like, you said your mom? He's like, oh yeah, I did that. We're gonna handle that tomorrow. I spoke to the fan, but we gotta finish this because it gotta drop Tuesday. It was like Sunday night was like late. Mm. And I'm looking at him like, mm. you said, like we're like, nah, you could you could take the top, you know what I mean? We'll tell them a week, postpone. He's like, no, we gotta finish this and I'm gonna handle that. <clears throat> and that at that moment is when I was like, oh, yeah, this man is a different serious. And it's not no love lost to the moms, no love lost to y'all, but well, nah, nothing taking him off. And that's when I was like, nah, I gotta work harder. Like and then he's gonna go home and edit this and drop it on Tuesday. Right. You feel me? So like that that gave me a hundred percent respect. RP to his mom, but that was that was different. Cause I don't yeah, think it, it takes a special kind of dedication to reach uh, a great level of success. Uh, some people would use certain things as a hindrance or, or or make it seem as though this is what what's holding me back. Where other people would be like, you know what, that's going on. But I know that this person want me to do this. Yes. So I'm gonna keep doing this and I'm gonna better everybody around me. Yeah. It's a different type of mindset. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. bro, I'm I'm also, as much as I I don't believe it, I'm traumatized from my upbringing. Like I'm desensitized from death and all mm -hmm. that shit. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you, I've seen so much death in my life that I I rationalize everything. So when my mom's passed, the way that I looked at it was, I'm 38 years old. I had my mother till I'm 38. How many people lost their mother at 15? How many people lost their mother at five? How many people lost their mother at birth? Fuck am I feeling a way about? I should be looking at the sky and telling God, thank you. Thank you, you. thank you for the time. You understand what right. I'm saying? Like my, my daughter lost her mother at 13. Her, her little brother lost, her, lost his mother at five. My, my, my daughter's mother died while giving childbirth. Her newborn daughter lost her mother at birth, will never have any indication. I got memories in my mom's. What the fuck am I crying about? Mm. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, nah, nigga, deal with it and keep it moving. It is what it is. Like, and, and I hate to say it, but bro, this is the hand that we are dealt. Right. We came into this world with balls. This is the rent that we pay. Mm. Point blank, period. Be mm. a man. And 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 I and I that's why I hate when these days where people talk about men need to be more emotional. No, they don't. God nah. designed us the way that we are for a reason. We cannot deal with emotions. You want to see what emotional men do? Watch the ID channel. Emotional men kill women. Emotional right. men shoot up fucking jobs. They that's what emotional men do. Right. Yeah. You that's understand what, what I'm though. saying? Like, nah, bro. That's a fact. It yeah. is what it is. I agree with Was that. Was the writing create um therapeutic for you? Is what? Therapeutic for you was your writing therapeutic. Oh, definitely. This is your brother. There's not a thing that I write that doesn't come from an experience of mine. Right. Um, and I think that's what allows me to be such. <sighs> I sound arrogant. So when I say such a good writer, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but this is why. This is what allows me to be pretty good at what I do. Right. It's just the fact that everything is based off of experience. And the reason being is I don't ever want to write about nothing that I know nothing about. And it's simple. I feel like I'm misleading people if I'm doing that. 
That's what you talk about all the time, man. It's your raps. So I be telling people in the studio, hey, man, don't lie about that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth about this. Yeah. Yeah. Highlight yourself. You'll feel so good bad. about it later. Yeah. So when I sit back and I play a song, even if it, it might, it might hurt the people I'm talking about. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? When I know that, like, yo, this is all fact. Yeah. This is all a piece of me that's locked right now in this time. This record could go out, people could listen to it, but that's a piece of me that's gonna resonate forever. Mm -hmm. And it's real. My truth could never be wrong. No, you took the song from me. Yeah. My I, and I, yo, bro, and I can't tell you how many times I listen to that shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's simply because, like, bro, I, there's an energy that comes from anything that's true. And right. I, 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 could feel, I could feel it every time, every time I listen to it, man. You know, and, I, and if you want me to be honest with you, I think that's why Money and Violence resonated. I don't think it had anything to do with the violence. I think that when people, yo, bro, they felt it. And it's like, how does this show that looks like it was shot on a cell phone, how is it that I can emotionally connect to this so much? Right. And it's because, you know, and I hate to sound like a cliche, but this was created with love. <laughs> 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 Right. I, got, I got a question. You say that twice, Diddy's going to pop up out of nowhere. I got a deal for you niggas. I got a question for you, Mo. Um, one of the prom prominent characters you had on the show was Miz, mm -hmm. and I don't see him here now. So, like, what what happened? Oh, man. Oh. And, and y'all get me exclusive, because, you know, I've never talked about this. I've never somewhere. talked about this. <laughs> I've never talked about this. Um, First and, for, first and foremost, I want to say that um, Miz was my little brother, bro. Yeah. I loved that nigga probably more than I loved myself. You understand what I mean? Um, me and Miz had a relationship way before Money and Violence, right? Like Miz was one of the dudes that I was out there in the streets doing whatever I was doing with. Um, but it's just so crazy. You you look at the amount of money that you made with a man and there's never been issues. And then you realize that attention and fame and also other people, you know, coming into the equation can destroy all of that. Right. The situation with Miz occurred and all I'm gonna say is this is my perspective. Right. They always right. say in every story, there's two sides, three sides, three, three sides. sides. There's three sides. my side, his side, and, the and, the truth, and then the there's truth. the truth. Right. My side is this. When all the attention came, you know, he started getting a little full of himself, which I was all right with. Um, because I felt he deserved it. Like, yo, you know, be proud I, of yourself. You, you did your thing. Yeah, you be proud of yourself. You right. should be. But then um, the truth is that uh, the young lady he was dealing with, Nunu Nels, she came along and I always say like, people ask me, yo, am I mad at Nunu? I'm like, I'm not mad at Nunu. Nunu don't owe me nothing. Nunu ain't know me. You yeah. understand where I'm coming from? Right. She came right. through for her own benefit. <laughs> and as of what I believe, she got in his head, right? Mm -hmm. um, got in his head and to, to make him believe what? She got in his head to believe that the show was all about him, that without him, the show could not exist. You know, she, she got in his head to make him believe that, yo, brother, the only reason this show was popping is because of you. Wow. Blew him up. Blew him, up. Blew him said, up. I don't fuck with that bitch no more. That is crazy. <laughs> and you see? And you see? <laughs> and, and I will say that you know, the entire time that we were doing our thing before Money and Violence, I hate to put it this way, but it is a reality. Like he was always in my shadow, right? Like I was the guy and he was the guy beside me. Right. And I really feel like he's always been looking for that validation. He's always been looking to hear that you're better than Mo. And when she came along and said that, like he ate a hook, line and sinker. Um, Acting on it. Which I'm not, I'm not even mad at. You guys used to live together, bro. Yeah, we lived together. Bro, me and... How is this... How long have me and no live together? Before, when I met you, I together. Damn. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. no. <laughs> 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 
yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, we know we, we yeah, yeah. because this it, is it, this it, is it, this it, is what it, happened. It, we we used to, we used to hustle together. Right. 2010, he he was married. He was yeah, married. Right. He was married since he was like in his early twenties. And what happened was him and his wife split. And when him him and his wife split, you know, he started staying at my crib. Um, and at the time, like you know, he was just. He was just crashing on the couch, and I'm not saying this in any derogatory sense. It was just that's what it's occurred shit. at his life. Homeboy right. shit. He was crashing on the couch, and um, from there I was like, "Yo, bro, we need a bigger place." You know what I'm saying? So we went and got this really nice like crib downtown Brooklyn. Or whatever. Yeah, like we got this really nice crib downtown Brooklyn. Um, but once again, like the fallout with Miz, man. I never had an issue with the fact that he wanted to step away and not, all right, bro, like everybody's not in your life for a lifetime. Sometimes people in, the li- in your life for a season just to teach you and for you to move on. Right. But it was the fact that he told so many lies on me after we parted ways, mm. saying I stole from him, saying I never paid him, mm. saying that I tried to fuck his girl. All of that shit was mm. lies. You understand? And then you tried to. Huh? He said that you tried to. I tried to fuck Nuno. Which, which anyone who knows me knows that that's totally left of my character. Yes, why, why is that totally left of your character? Because, because I'm going to tell you this. Is it a standard You thing? watch Money and Violence? Is it a standard You thing? watch Money and Violence? Yeah. Mo don't play Rafe. Rafe plays Moses. Mm. Okay. I'm mm. not, I, don't, I don't act as that character. That character acts as me. Right. So everything you saw on Money and Violence, all that principle, that's me, bro. That is who I am. Mm-hmm. You understand? And, and to be honest with you, the only reason that there's been such a hiatus is because I don't move for money. I agree. Everything you said. Yeah, like, that's... that's. <laughs> you know, if I fuck with you, I fuck with you. And if right. I don't fuck with you, I don't fuck with you. Like, that's right. just who I am. You right. understand what I'm saying? No so, so he he believed that? No, he didn't believe that. Oh. It was just all about assassinating my character because you have to understand. And I mean, bro, this this ain't nothing new. This is something I've been through all my life. Well, I got to ask though. Mm. <laughs> Dig in, bro. Feel free. Knowing what I know now <laughs> about these YouTube streets. Um, <laughs> yeah. Y'all didn't really know how to place ads properly. You dig what I'm saying? What do you mean? Like, as far as like placing ads to yeah. raise the monetization. Yeah. Oh, nah, we, we, don't, we didn't know none of that shit. We didn't know shit. none of that. Yeah, <laughs> that. No. <laughs> right. So I'm looking like, how the fuck was he paying all these niggas? They weren't getting paid. That. They you weren't getting paid. Yo, my nigga, like, season one, we made absolutely no, no, money. Money. Nobody Nobody got paid. no Nobody got paid. Nobody got paid season. I'm going to tell you what niggas got paid off. Niggas, from niggas got paid off for hostings. Yeah. No, the hosting, no, no, we're talking about acting. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Niggas, but hosting, acting, nobody got nobody paid. Got acting, paid. nobody got yeah. paid. Y'all didn't know how to monitor. Nobody got paid. getting hundreds of thousands of views. And we didn't get a dollar. And you wasn't getting No, no, no. You know what? Maybe, maybe like, because because when I got a manager, first of all, first of all, for me posting stuff, for me, po- bro, I was so such a novice and not knowing nothing. Like if you look at what episode is that? I think that's episode three, three or four. Bro, I use Biggie's niggas bleed on the show. Like, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, you, you, you understand yeah. what I'm saying? That's like, I use Vibe on this show. I all, use all the YouTubers are like, no, yo, yeah. no, this is this is what no. I'm saying. I use Fab, uh, the joint with Junior Reed. Mm. On episode oh, four, oh, oh, yeah, so yeah, I was yeah, getting yeah. copyright strikes like a motherfucker. Like, yeah, copyright you understand? Claims. Cause son, I don't know. Yo, my nigga, I'm a nigga that sells drugs. <laughs> but what you saw, what you saw the cash sign? I don't know nothing. What you about saw the cash this. sign turn red? I that had to be an indication no. that wait a minute. No, you didn't even know what the because cash sign what was. Because what you have to listen. Listen, what you have to understand. Yo, listen, listen, listen. What you have to understand is this. Once again, like I said, you don't really know that. I came off of doing what I was doing in the street and I was living off my stash. I was fine. Money was not my concern. Yeah, yeah, you, realize, you get what I'm Money was not my concern. <laughs> right, right. It's just, oh, people like this? I'm going to keep doing this until somebody comes to me and says they want to do something with it. Right. So money was not my concern. I was, my nigga, my, right. I was fine. But uh, what I'm saying is that that could have um, that could have changed the negotiations a lot. It it, it could have, but you also have to understand once again, um, 
I had no knowledge right. of none of this. None of it. So, like what you're saying, that could have changed my negotiation. I didn't even know about negotiations. <laughs> only mm-hmm. negotiations I knew is, mm-hmm. what's the number on that, bro? Like, yeah. it, that's the only negotiation. Right. Same shit with but me. But you would have had a number that you could have walked in and be like, no, oh, this is the number one. I know. I know. But right. looking back, man, I, I believe everything happens for a reason. And the right. reason I say I believe everything happens for a reason is simply this. I will never regret whatever incidents that took place that exposed everyone for who they are. Right. You know? And when I say that, I really want to look in camera and say this. Like, I'm not even speaking about the man in a negative light. You know, I'm just speaking of the reality of the situation. Like, right. we started this together, and it's so crazy because... Is, it, is there a chance that you guys no. could recognize, no. yourself? No. Did Why you not? try? No. Why not? Um, Principle. The reason being is I don't respect you anymore. And nothing will make me ever respect you again. Nothing. Nothing. And the reason being is because when you were around us... You pretended to be cut from a certain cloth. If I want you to think back about this, and everybody watching could think back about this, as much as dude was on social media telling me to suck his dick and all of it, bro, you've never seen me respond, ever. I've never said nothing about that man on social media because it's beneath me, my nigga. The, the cloth that I'm cut from, we don't do that. Right. What am I going like, that's not it. I don't do that, bro. Yeah, and there's doing? nothing that you can ever say that's going to make me go back and forth with you on social media. But he knows the type of dude that I am. So it's like, yo, yeah, I can say this. He's never going to say nothing back. I will. And, and it makes me look, yeah. I'll but, say something and don't, And I don't knock you for it. I'm just t- like, right. the person that I am, uh, you can have that, bro. Because who are you trying to impress? A bunch of people that... They don't know me. And the people that do know me was hitting my phone like, yo, son, why is your man front? You get what I'm saying? And when I say that, I don't say that in any way to to, to bring the man down. I'm just speaking the reality of the situation. I wish him the absolute best. I truly do. I truly do. You know what I mean? But it's just so sad because once again, dude was, yo, dude was my heart, bro. Like, like real talk. You understand what I think, I'm saying? I think um, <clears throat> sometimes you got to watch the company that you keep yeah. and the company that they keep. keep yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes people don't see it coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I'll judge one of my mans off of who he brings around. Yeah. Right. I'm definitely starting to do that. And I'll be like, yo, <laughs> uh, I thought I knew you, bro. Uh, yeah. that, that ain't you. Yeah, but see, but this, let me, let me put you on to something. One thing that I've come to understand is you don't ever get between a man and his woman. It's true. I don't I don't play those games. Like, all right, I'm not feeling her, but that's your chick, my nigga. You right. deal with her because I understand the ramifications of that, right? And although I don't agree with who she is and what she does, that can cause a rift between me and you. And if I got love for you, my nigga, look, you'll, you'll figure it out <laughs> later. Mm-hmm. You understand? But even more than that, once I realized that she was getting to him. I'm literally on the sidelines rooting for him. Like, nah, my nigga. It's Snap more love than that between Snap me out. and Snap you. Out. I know you're not going to do this. Yeah. You understand? And if you do do this, it's not for me to stop you from going there. Right. Because I need to see what you're capable of. And if that's what you're capable but of. But you know what? I got I got to be honest. For, for one, I don't know if you, if it's 100% guaranteed that that's something she caused or it was something that was always with I think head. it was both. I think there's a balance of it. I think I think that um cuz I said that. Remember I said that it had I think it also had to do with years of being in my shadow and just having just wanting to hear, "Nah, I'm on the same level as this nigga," right? Because right. you know, people used to refer to him as my little brother or or or, or whatever and although I've always dealt with him with the utmost respect you know, um, but I think that it was something that he felt he needed. And I, and that's why I said I'm not mad at that. Was that I'm, a mistake on your part? What mistake? Was of that course. Some, was that something I, that, I could be accountable. I could be accountable and say that, yeah. To definitely. bring him out of your shadow and say, no, no, no. It's not my, this, this is my guy. We started this together. I've always done that. But make it more clear when those no, examples came it's out. Not. I'm asking. It's not. I'm it's asking. not. And I'm, I'm asking. And I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you why it's not because mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you what I learned from him. 
Watch who you let sit in your throne because people from a distance can't tell who's truly the king. Mm -hmm. So my mistake was actually allowing the people to see him as my equal. Not saying that he wasn't, but in the situation that was not the case. So when I allowed him to sit in my throne, it gave him the power to lead the people into right. trying to so destroy me. Was the mistake mm. was the mistake allowing him to sit in your throne versus him having his own throne and fortifying that? Was that the mistake? You can have it is your not, own it throne. It is not for me to give another man a throne. <laughs> but no, no, but, but you don't, you don't have to destroy a, mine to have it is, yours. It is for a man, it is, which is why I didn't mention that. That's right. why, that's it why is, I'm mentioning this yeah, specifically. It, it is for a man to build his own throne. A throne is the one thing that you can never give a man. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and after that situation, what I came to realize was, wow, this is why kings only keep the company of kings. Because anybody else will feel inadequate in their presence. So was the mistake not acknowledging? Yes. That, that, That's the mistake. No, it wasn't, it wasn't not acknowledging. I'm just, I'm just looking for no, this. I'm no, I know, for. I know, no. And I don't have no problem with this uh, line of dialogue. I think it, people forget It was that. never that because anyone that's here will tell you, yo, bro, right. I treated that man as an equal. Right. But, yeah. but what it was is the people around me saw who he was and saw who I was right. and treated us accordingly. Mm -hmm. And because of that, he felt the way. It never came from me. Mm -hmm. But but it's, it, yeah, it's it different. came from how, like, he, how like, he personally moved. Listen, yeah, it came from how he personally moved with everyone. Melo yeah. and LeBron, good friends. But LeBron is LeBron. LeBron. Now, it shouldn't take away from Melo because Melo is Melo. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there's a Melo that wants to be LeBron right. Right? secretly. And it, it could poison the situation when Melo should just be Melo. Yeah. LeBron That's should be fact. LeBron. Yeah. And, 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 and not to mention that True when LeBron is working hard to get Melo as far as he can possibly get, you know, I, I'll tell you this. Another, another rift in the relationship was it came to a point, and he'll tell you this because even he has to be accountable. When we first started this, Yo, bro, I was writing, directing, oh, editing. Saying, I wasn't sleeping three days a week. We would come off set. I get to the crib. Yo, bro, is anybody going to help me edit? Everybody goes to sleep That's while I right. stay up till the next morning. That's the right. You know, and all he does is sit in his room and smoke weed, bro, and it's fine. Mm -hmm. But then it got to a point where now we're getting big enough where situations are coming, right? And people are like, yo, you're the worker. So we want to deal with you. Mm -hmm. right? right? So I come to them and I'm like, yo, look, bro, I'm going to create this other situation because I have these other scripts written and I'm going to do it with, the, with this other situation because ain't nobody helping me, bro. And I'm, I'm tired of putting in the work and then coming home and splitting the pie four ways. It doesn't make sense. When nobody's doing nothing, it's not making, and, and he's one of the four ways and he's sitting right here with me and I can, and let me, let me add to that. Outside of that, he'll still take us with him to see if there's another opportunity for us to come along on the set, be the cameraman. He never left us out. I want to speak on that because it's like, I don't understand why so many people feel so entitled when, honestly, this man was holding the camera, writing the script, editing by himself, putting the situations together like that. That was a major that's problem the, for real. He's the boss, bro. Nobody wants to say it. He's the boss. Yeah, We're yeah, working. Yeah, yeah. And he's giving us an opportunity. Right. Take that opportunity, bro. So, like... He put, hold on, hold on, hold on, not for, he put, he put us all in a position to sit here. So, mm -hmm. And I want to go full circle real quick. Real leader, quick. not the boss. Leader, 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 leader. leader. Yeah. You feel me? And he put us all in a situation to have moments like this. I've done countless interviews, Breakfast Club. I, nobody was checking for me. You feel me? If it wasn't for, if it wasn't for what he, if it wasn't for what he did, you know what I mean? We wouldn't be in that position. And like, even I, I want to. Before Money Vines got hot, Math probably don't remember. We was in Miami, and I just want to give Math his flowers. He was like, "Yo, that's the dude from the show." And he got us in a club. Was, to me, yeah, that was I big. That was that was big. At Math, the time. you remember that? Me, Math, I see your face. It was me and Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Shane. Play. Play. Since was it that, club play? I don't remember. I just yeah, know we was we was we was all right around that time. People knew us a little, but we was outside on the line. You I think it was playing. He's like, nah, I know. He's like, nah, I ain't Rest going in. Rest my man Ben. He's like, yeah. I ain't going in until they go in. So this is like a full circle yeah. moment for me. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like another opportunity Math is giving me. So giving me a flower. Salute, I appreciate salute, that. Salute, salute. You feel me? But 
this man right here, he put a lot of people in positions, you know what I mean? And in that situation, Miz character, me and him, we grew up together, like family, my mom or his mom, you know, um, we basically called each other cousins. So that's how the connection happened. That was his partner. He brought me on because I was doing events around that time. He was like, yo, my partner might want to invest in some of your parties. So we sat on the table. Before Money and Violence came, we tried like a hundred businesses. We tried <laughs> podcasts. We tried t-shirts. Worst, worst t-shirts in the world. Worst bro. t-shirts in the world. <laughs> the worst. Yo. And I put out a hell of bread. Money, we thought it was the hottest thing to be water. <laughs> so all that failed. And then he came through with the camera and the and the mic. And he's like, yo, we're going to film this. This, this movie and that started picking up. So it's just like, to me, it's like, I don't understand why it was a Yeah, people switch. entitlement, yeah. Right. And yeah. entitlement. Yo, yeah. I'm gonna I'm put you on to this. I'm gonna put, yo, did any of y'all see House of Gucci? Nah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, who saw House of Gucci? Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you when I watched that movie, it reminded me of what I went through, right? And I'm gonna tell you why. Cause House of Gucci made me say, be careful who you share your dream with. Because Facts. when it's time for you to move on, they might be willing to kill you for it like it was theirs. Mm-hmm. Mm. You you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That is just like when Gaga was in a movie, like she wasn't even with a Gucci, but she wound up taking Bruh, over. Bruh, and all you did, all you did was, yo, I love this person, so I'ma share my dream with this person, right? This is my mission. When I came to niggas and I was like, yo, we gonna act. What niggas said? Hell no. Yo, bro. I'm not talking about I'm you. talking, I'm about, talking, about, talking about I'm talking about the initial conversation was between the four of us. Four it was me, four, man, him, man. do, and me. Yo, nine, bro, nine. this is the idea. I'ma write this script. We gonna act. Niggas is like, act. Like, nah. I'm like, yo, all I'm asking is that y'all trust me. Yo, Mo, you sure? Trust me, trust me. You understand? And, and, and we we embarked on this journey. And the crazy thing is, let me tell you. And I've told y'all this a million times. When things started picking up, I sat everybody down and I said, "Yo, look, my dream is for us to all get rich, but I need y'all to understand it's not going to happen at the same time for everyone. Some people are going to go first. Some people are going to go second, right. but as long as the relationship is intact, the bridge is still there for it mm. to happen. That's a right. fact he said that. That's the reality, bro. Yeah. If I'm the dude doing 90% of the work, how do you expect my check not to be cut first? Right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that doesn't a, make any sense. Yeah, yeah. Did you have a run into him after that? Huh? Did you have a run into him, see him? <sighs> you know, I hate to say this because I don't want it to sound that way, but... No, nah, don't say it. <laughs> I think nah, I know what you're gonna say. Speak I mean, with, with all with all the social social media antics that dudes was doing, they were hiding from me. So you never that, seen them. I saw him one time. Um, my daughter's four years old. Uh, when my daughter was probably three months old, it was my daughter's mother's birthday. We had booked a suite in the city, and I had my baby in the stroller. At the time, he was working at Carmine's. He was a host. He was outside of Carmine's and I was walking by and that was the first time I saw him in years. And I and I was like, bro, you lucky I'm with my daughter's mother. You said I, that to I, him? I said, I said, just understand when I see you, I had a slap for your face. You said that to him? Of course I said that to wow. him. Wow. You know, um, and he just looked at me and I just kept it moving. Like, I was with my daughter's mother. I'm not gonna ruin her birthday because of that. You know, but at this point, at I, I will say that that at this point. It's been seven years, bro. I have I have no ill feelings. At the time, the reason I was still so angry was because he was still like leaving comments under my page, posting comments about me, you know, making posts about me on Instagram. Yeah. And I've never said nothing on IG. Yeah, so but when problem. me and him seen, because to me, Who? you know, I was he just like, a, when we see each other face to face, I deal with it. Him. He had yeah. a following. You get what I'm saying? Not, so I, I couldn't see him. him. I gotta ask, <laughs> you understand? Uh-huh. You, you guys are not seeing eye to eye anymore. Are you guys still in communication with Yeah, I spoke mm-hmm. to Ray today. He wanted me to be in a movie. Huh? Two days ago, two weeks ago. Yeah. Every, 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 every time I talk to him, I'm up. And he'll call me? Yeah. And, and what will I say? Do you think we do me a moment? Moment? I don't give a fuck. Yeah, like, yo, bro. <laughs> 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 yo, bro. 
Look, we got we got our issues. No, niggas, we, no, no. I, me and I'm gonna tell you why we don't rock with each other, which is crazy to me because we supposed to be cousins. So when the whole thing happened, I used to go over there because I met Mo through him. So I'm like, I'm gonna go check my cousin. You know, he's with he's like, yo. And mind you, I always know there's two sides to the story. Mm-hmm. So I came into the game. You brought me in as an investor, but I know Mo for being solid. I know, but he's talking to me. I'm like, so we grown men. I will, let's all go over there, sit down, talk. Even if I get to fist fighting, like we got a whole season to shoot, we got things to do. Right. Like I don't care right. about none this of that. Shit like, clicking. Let, right. let's if he if he owe you bread, ego. if he owe you bread, let's go holler at him together. We are gonna talk about because maybe he forgot me, you know. So that when that never started happening, like he never wanted to go, and I'm like, anytime he'd ask me, I'd be like, I'd right, be like, I'll sit down. I'd be like, I would say, I'll sit down with him. I said, I said, I said, I can't promise you that I won't fuck him up before we have a conversation, but. Right. But we we can sit down. He right. always say that, and I'll go back to him like, "Yo, listen, I don't, I can't tell you one more less, but we'll all be there." So you know, make sure yeah, it don't go too. And, and, and yo, man, it ain't never gonna go to the extreme. I don't want to hurt yeah. that boy. Yo, it's like when your little brother violates you. You gonna fuck him up. Bro. You understand? Mm-hmm. And when I say fuck him up, you ain't trying to break the nigga off. Oh, break, nah. nigga, but you gonna rough him up. Yeah, you like shorty, sure, you crazy? Yeah, yeah. You so, understand what right. I'm saying? And, then, and then, so, like, why are you, so I, because I, like I need, baby I need dogs, clarity. <laughs> I need because I just, I just needed I to give clarity on when I say fuck him up because it's not, it's not with animosity. Yo, bro, it actually comes from a place of love. That's the it's crazy hatred, thing. Yeah. It it's not does. hatred. It normally does. Hold yeah. yeah. Let me let me yeah. finish this story. So it got to the point where now we still got to do press releases. Like this was like. Out of nowhere. So what season was this? When this it was after two. This is after, after two. two. Yo, after season after, two. I, I just want to say something. You know how I found out he was no longer on the show? On social media. I woke up one morning. My man texted me, yo, go check Ray Page. And when I checked Ray Page, I saw a post, I'm no longer on Money and Violence. That's how I found out the nigga was no He wanted to show. entertain his following instead of just calling the man the man. That's so, how that's how I found out he was no longer so, on the show. So we're doing press releases now. Mo, Mo, he coming at me like, yo. Because Noah is on a run, basically tarnishing his name. He like, yo, you still hanging out with him? I'm like, yo, that's my cousin. Y'all got to talk. You feel me? So me and him kind of having out. But I started realizing, like, he never, ever said, yo, don't hang out with him. He's like, yo, you're not going to speak up for me. But he's telling me. And I'm not, I'm not saying don't speak least. up to him to the public. Yeah, to I'm saying, person. yo, bruh, how are you not? You know me. Facts. When he's saying his BS, how are you not checking him? Wow. So so then yeah, Noah's like, how you doing press releases with him? You met him through me. You got to pick a side. That's when I was like. Nah, something ain't right. You right. feel me? So it's just your way or no way for all of us. You know what I mean? Right. And then like he legit cut people off. And then a situation happened. I got a phone call for, I don't want to put no name. We had opportunities. Set for a show, down. for a reality show. No, uh, yeah, we're not going to say the show. We're not going to say the show. We're just going to say reality show. So they offered me some bread. They're like, yo, it's me. if you beef with this, that, and I'm like, I'm not faking no beef with no other. I go home that same day. He was and trying, I'm to, he was trying to get on the Somebody told me that he was up next. That same day, he's dissing my moms. He's oh, talking no, about... No, no, no. Because he's trying to create he's drama to create so he can get drama. on that reality show. So that was show. the one day I looked at it and I just blocked him. And that was it from there. That's when I was like, nah, this it's it's more to it and I can't. Oh, so super into toxic. Battle rapper. Super toxic. <laughs> I mean, but, but you know what? But but it's fine. It's and, and when I say it's fine, it's crazy. I really you mean like it, it's 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 fine because I believe nothing happens to you, everything yeah. happens for you. Right. You understand? And, it's a lesson. And and and, and I got off cheap, right? Because it could have cost me more later. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so so time. look, if if I'm gonna be totally honest, and don't nothing hurt me, bro. And you know this, don't mm-hmm. nothing hurt me. But that it stung a little. Yeah. And it stung a little simply because that was my man. Like that was that was my dude, bro. So I mean, I'm I'm looking at it like you lost your moms. You lost your best friend. And then the person that you share a household with flips on you. That's a that's a lot to deal with. We we're gonna take a five minute break. You can watch every episode? Tell my mom. Yeah. Hell yeah. And I love that shit. You love and it. I and I don't love it from 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 a perspective of ego. I love it because it's a good fucking friend. show. So so you need to find the market that your show applies to and promote to them. And promote to them. Yeah. Yeah. 
But I'm telling you, the easiest way, y'all shot a couple episodes of, of Money and yeah, yeah, yeah. again. Yo, bro, listen. Yo, I, the most YouTube views we ever had, we, 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 did the money, we did the Money and Violence reunion. Like, in all honesty, and it's embarrassing, but most of our episodes get 1,000 views. Our Money and Violence episode got 60,000 views. We, we, we did a reunion. Right. Money and violence. You know what I'm saying? So it was every that shit got sixty thousand views. Yeah, I saw that. You, you you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um so there's a market. There's yeah. a market there. You understand? Yo, bro, I, I got a, I got 157,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Right. But it's just they don't tap into every all bro, all they want is money and violence. That's, <laughs> That's it. The <laughs> niggas don't want no, 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 no. But this is what I'm saying. Tap into that market and give them a little extra. Once they get used to watching y'all, when, when the season's over, you're still dropping the episodes, you're still chiming in. Yeah, you know no, we we're, we're gonna Yo, nigga, I told you I wanted to do that. Somebody stop. I already, I already wrote a comedy feature for you. Like I your mom you is. <laughs> Spin off. Why are you on the phone, yeah, bro? I'm talking about Adrian. Nigga, I, yo, my nigga, I just, I, just, I just wrote a Rafe origin story called The Old Brooklyn. Rafe when he was like 18 years old. And when I tell you, this movie, if I, you read that shit, this shit is so fucking ill. And once again, it's back in the vein of money and violence. It's, it's not just about... Because to me, when 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 I thought about writing the script for this movie about the young Rafe, I was like, what makes Rafe the most interesting? And I'm like, what makes him the most interesting is you really can't say whether Rafe's a good guy or a bad guy, right? Because he does fucked up shit, but he's so principle based that you're like, damn, but he's a good nigga, right? right. So in this in this movie, it's he's a young dude in the streets, but his weakness is his empathy. Right, so him and his man is robbing these little white boys for bikes in the park, and he's looking at this a little six year old. He doesn't really want to do this. You understand what I'm mm. saying? But in the same breath, the theme, the ongoing theme throughout the movie is predator and prey. It's like, but damn, if I don't act as a predator, then to the rest of the predators, I'm going to be prey. prey. Yeah. So I got to do this. You understand? And then by the end of the movie, what he realizes is I need to learn to separate my role and my identity. Who I, what I do is not who I am. You know, like. What I do is not who I am. What I do, yeah. What I do is not who How I am. How do you apply that to the people who have done you wrong? Or do you apply that to the people who have done you wrong? What I do, I said what I do. I didn't say what they do. <laughs> but I'm asking. I'm not, that's why How? I'm asking. How question. do you? My identity has to do with my actions. It has nothing to do with no one else's. I would imagine that a philosophy like that would leave room for possible it forgiveness doesn't. in the past. It doesn't. Look, man, it does his kumbaya shit. Nah, it's not, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's, a, it's not kumbaya yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Kumbaya. It's, 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 not, it's not, it's not, it's not, no, it's not. Just because you want to point out that you don't know it's doesn't mean kumbaya everybody shit. else wants to put down. I'm just saying. Kumbaya shit. But uh, say, yo, bro, Christ. listen to me. <laughs> maybe it could be, maybe it could be the, applied to, I can to only, people that have done I, something that done wrong that didn't mean to do wrong. And every every man has their own list of unforgivables. I got mine, right? Everybody has their shit where these are the no, things that if I you have did no this, list. I have no list of unforgivables. None. Any anything I've done, although I'm not proud of it, nothing happens to me. Everything happens for me. There's many things that I've done in my life that I am not proud of. But guess what? It was necessary because, like I tell my daughter, I wouldn't be the man that I am and the father that I am to all three of my daughters had I've not gone through every last one of these things. Because everything that I've gone through, even the things I'm not proud of, I've learned from and I've changed because so of. So could you forgive homeboy? No. No, I f I've forgiven him. I've I've been forgiven him. Okay. okay. I just don't respect him. And if I don't respect you, I can't fuck with you. But I've forgiven. Yes, him. Yes, I've forgiven him. Okay. Yo, bro, you know how you know I've forgiven him? That's because I have I no desire to put my hands on him if we cross paths anymore. Mm -hmm. I've forgiven him, bro. I just can't fuck with you no more. <laughs> but, See? But, but how does See? How, how does that work for for this revamp of money and violence without him? You know how you know how it works? We good. Let me put you on. You know why he could say we're good? Y'all wasn't on set to understand that I've written every line that came out that character's no, hey, mouth. Hey, hey. Wait, y'all wasn't on set for two, three hours for me to teach this nigga how to shoot to make it look real. Y'all wasn't on set 
for me to show a nigga how to creep when he's running up on a nigga. <laughs> so, so the truth is, what y'all saw, do you know how many times we were on set for hours? A nigga kept fucking up, and then when it aired, a nigga came to me and said, yo, my nigga, good looking, because your editing made all my fuck ups look good. So the truth is, it had nothing to do with them. That shit was all me, man. That's okay. I'm just That's not right. a braggadocious nigga. So I've never presented myself as that. I've sat back and allowed them niggas to take the glory. Mm-hmm. And that was my mistake because once again, like I said, that's why you don't let a man sit in your throne because those from afar will think he's king too. That part. That's that like that. was my biggest mistake. Not voicing all of this. Not taping it while it was going on. To let the people know, nah, I'm the nigga that taught niggas to do this. Facts. And to mm-hmm. an- answer that question, basically when you lose one employee that you train, you can train another. You can train... Nigga, I could take, listen, ah, I can take any it, nigga and teach him to do no, no, that. No, no, I, I get like, it. I, I know what he wants to say. I get I know it. But, but you know, I'm going to tell you what the obstacle is. I'm going to tell you what the obstacle is. The obstacle is the people are used to seeing his face on that box. They're attached to that. And that's what I'm saying. I'm going to tell you, I don't know. Any of y'all in here watch Godfather Home? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. First two seasons. Malcolm X. Mm-hmm. Y'all watched yeah. the last season? I remember that. It's a new actor. It's a new yeah. actor playing Malcolm X. Y'all gave a fuck? No. no. And the fir- and the nigga from the first two seasons was Hold ill. On. Hold on. Was ill as fuck. Hold on. Hold on. Now I got to ask. Watch Fresh Prince? Yeah, on Viv. <laughs> <laughs> when they switched on Viv. Nobody did it gave fuck a fuck. you up? <laughs> <laughs> fuck Hold on. on. But, but did it fuck you up, back. though? It did. But the reason why it did. But by the end of the season, did y'all even remember? But it kind of fucked you up, right? Did anybody, nah, 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 did anybody did stop nah. watching Fresh Prince because nah. they changed they the whole But here's no. the thing. If, no, if they no. brought the original on Viv back, no, nobody we, cares. But you would have felt better. Yo, Matt. Yeah, but we still got four seasons. Cares, Yo, Matt, Matt. 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 We still like all, said, watched we accepted all four it. seasons of the new on Viv. Right or wrong. Yo, right. We watch every episode. Yeah. Nah, I didn't watch every episode. I'm just saying, we watch the new on and Viv. I, yo, and I honestly believe if you want me to be honest with you, Money, you can't compare what happened on Fresh Prince to Money and Violence because you know what was the attraction to Money and Violence? Everybody, yo, this is the first time I seen the real streets on TV. And do you know why the real streets was on TV? Because I coach niggas. Because I coach, you know how many times, yo, you never robbed a nigga before. That's not how you run up on a nigga. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, nigga, that's not how you shoot. That's so you don't know how to fuck the gun kick back? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that's why it looked how it looked, my nigga. Oh, it wasn't because niggas knew what the fuck they was doing. That's a fact. That's I need, a I fact. need to write now a shit. <laughs> like, that, that's what I ain't... <laughs> no, 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 I get it. You never shot anything on your character. No, I actually right. <laughs> But I'm just saying, this is where, this is where the, the, and the anger doesn't come from arrogance. Mm-hmm. It just comes from, you know what? And it's like what you said. I'm not mad. You know why I'm not mad? Because this is what I wanted. I wanted everybody to believe that these characters were who they are. So I'm not mad at it. But in the same breath, it's still a kind of kick in the ass. Because it's like, damn, I should have let people know that this is what I was doing. No, no. In, in a way, no, nah. no, I don't, I don't think so. I think when your intentions are genuine, you do what's in your heart, and it'll get recognized. Mm-hmm. But you and I don't want to be recognized. No, but, but it will well, now be. Now you in the category. I don't want to be recognized because you don't really Whether have you want it or not. You don't really get it. It will say. be recognized. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and your peers speaking up for you, or. You know, other people who work with you, they'll, they'll show that. You know what I mean? Just yeah. the fact that you went from Money and Violence to working with Godfather of Harlem and, and other shows. Yeah, but man, I don't want recognition, my nigga. Tough. That, that, this is the thing. I don't, mm-hmm. bro, I've never wanted recognition. Tough. Nigga, I've been recognized my entire fucking life. Well, what do you want? Well, then nothing changes. You know what I want? My just do. What's your that just comes do? with recognition. My, hold on, hold on, hold on. My just do is just not painting me out to be someone I'm not. 
That's all. That's oh, also good luck, luck, nigga. Oh. <laughs> good luck, nigga. Good fucking nah, luck. You know what? I've been trying that for years. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I've been it, trying that for as, as it was coming out of my mouth, I realized how <laughs> stupid <laughs> this shit is. That's so crazy. You're like, nigga, what? <laughs> Yo, as it was coming Yo, out of my mouth, I'm like, some, what? The somebody fuck show me the nigga that got that. Nah, you right. Somebody show me the nigga that got that. Say no more. Say no more. This is what my judge do. Say no more. Now, as far as just do, <laughs> you right. You as far right. as just do, you guys hit on YouTube. Mm-hmm. It's bubbling. So the streets is talking about. Other other people are starting to create their shows, but in between that time, it seemed like there was a, a bidding war, or everybody's attention was turned to where money and violence was going to land. Mm-hmm. What was going to be the end goal? To, to this YouTube series, where was it gonna go? I had no idea the cameras was rolling for one. Me, I, but anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> God damn. I wanna tell them, hold on. Yeah, yeah. So before we was, it was no talks about being on TV. Mo wanted it to be independent. I was just talking to Champ outside. We had a plan before Tubi, before this Cloud9 TV was supposed to be the website, like how World Stars for videos for independent films. I don't know if I reached out to anybody over here, but before I got locked up, I reached out to a few people like Respect Life. Like, yo, since we got the following, drop your stuff on cloud9tv.net mm-hmm. instead of YouTube because all our followers are going to tap into y'all. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, Klein, I, I, remember I, I sent out probably to Brooklyn Way. Yeah, I sent yeah, out to yeah, about yeah, 30 and everybody was like, yeah, let's do it. Pieces. It was a whole bunch of series because right. we wanted to be that for the independent. And we knew their following would come to us. Of course, it benefits both ways. You feel me? So mm-hmm. right. that's what we were supposed to be. And then you create a, a world of like New York. New York Underground Television. Exactly. Yeah, right. So yeah. that's what we were supposed to be. And then I got locked up. That plan fell out. And that's when... And then what, what, what occurred was, um, at the time, once again, like when I started doing this, I really didn't know nothing about film. So, you know, I always say my biggest strength is that I know what I know, but I also know what I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I paired myself up with some people who were a little more experienced. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Um, and their vision for the show was to take it to television. It wasn't really what I wanted to do, you know, because I wanted to keep as much control in our hands as possible because I hate to sound woke, but I felt like I didn't, I felt like the show had become such a big part of the culture and people looked at it as so much of like guidance and everything. I didn't want to put that in the hands of anyone else, but then they were like, yo, look, we have the opportunity to go to television. Like this is once in a lifetime opportunity for someone who's never gone to film school or nothing for you to just wake up and decide to do this and for you to have this opportunity it's unheard of Mm -hmm. so i'm like oh so i'm like all right if y'all know y'all know better than i know so if this is what's best let's do it Mm -hmm. you know um a lot of people don't know this but power book two was supposed to be money and violence Mm -hmm. i had a developmental deal with stars uh we was in development for two years to develop the show for stars This was when Power was on, and the next show up was supposed to be Money and Violence. In the ninth inning, 50 came through, you know, did whatever he did. And I will say this. When I say this, I don't even mean this in any derogatory sense against Fifth, because me and Fifth don't know each other. He don't owe me shit, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, this is business. At the end of the day, he's going to do what's best for him and his project, which is what is expected. Make Mm -hmm. the best deal. Yeah, he's going to make the best deal. Like. You understand? Um, so they chose to go with uh, the sequel of Power, which was Power Book 2. And then they were like, yo, if you could wait five or six years, we'll still do your show. You know, a lot of people don't understand how television works. I'll tell you this. P-Valley that's on Stars, mm-hmm. that show was basically in development for eight years. Mm-hmm. Godfather Harlem was in development for 18 years. Mm, wow. You understand? Wow. People wow. don't get how television works. Right. So when they told me if I wait five, six years, like I really was like, eh, no, nah, I don't want to do that. You know, and I told my attorney to get me um, out of the situation. Um, out of the situation? What situation were you in? I was in a situation with stars where it was like the show was slated to have to go to them. You understand? Because I was in development. But was there one- a payout? No, there was no payout. Wait, wait, wait. Was y'all shelved? You can say we were shelved. Wait, yeah. Rafe, real quick. So you said sure. that because we don't understand how the, the film industry works in the timelines, right? So you said P-Valley was in 
uh, development. This for isn't during the years. time. I'm just giving an example. I'm saying P Valley was in work. development for eight years. Okay, so but what I'm saying is you guys were already developed, right? Because no, we were in development. Yeah, yeah. See, there's two type of deals with television, right? You could either get a developmental deal, which basically means this is how they word it. You have a script. We think the script has potential, but we have to figure out what is the version of the show that works for television, right? Mm. Television has a formula. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And at first, I was kind of annoyed by it, but what you have to understand is these people have been doing this for 100 years, and it's always worked for them. They're not going to deviate from their plan because you happen to roll the dice and hit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? So development is just, it's like artist development. Right, like what we, you have talent, you you have talent, but we have to figure out the version of you that works for the mainstream. For the mainstream, so that pretty much five million views, that, money that, was that justifies that nothing. exactly. They, they wanted to start because from zero. because a lot of people don't get. Let me ask y'all a question: How much do you think an episode of Power costs? For full production? No, let's just say the budget. How much does it cost to shoot an episode of Power? Like Four million dollars. Nah, How much does it cost to shoot an episode of Godfather Hall? Five point two million dollars. Okay. So, so when you're talking about companies that are investing this level of money, you have to get that these executives, who their job is on the line, if this shit fails, bruh, they're, gonna make the they're not trying to take no chances. We gonna have to develop this shit, whether it takes four years mm -hmm. until I feel and. I always say, you know what development is? Development is the process that makes executives comfortable. We need to keep working on this until I feel comfortable risking my job for you, bro. That's what that is. Yeah. That's all development. That's, all <laughs> that's development. what that right. is. That's A&Rs, that's all, all Exactly. And that's yeah. what it was with stars, right? Because we were the next up, but it was like, damn, 50 did power. This shit was successful as hell. We can go with the sequel. Damn, these dudes did what they did on the digital space and the people love them, but that's not our audience. Mm -hmm. Our audience is the power audience, the people who watch television. And not to mention, their show was free on YouTube. So we don't know if people are willing to pay for a subscription to watch this shit. Mm -hmm. But power, mm -hmm. we know they're willing to pay for a subscription. Fuck it, we're going with power. power. Right. That right. Makes sense. And then on top of it, we have a contract with 50 that if we don't go forward with him, we owe him money. Hold on, you owe you owe fifty cent money? No, no, stars, not stars, 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 oh, right. stars, stars. Put the hand in there. stars. And 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 I'm and I'm gonna tell you this, and I'm gonna tell you, you know this. how he be about his money, yeah. son. I'm just and I'm, saying. <laughs> and I'm and I'm gonna tell you this. Right. And I'm gonna tell you this. Fifty. You good, nigga. Nah, yo, bro, I don't got nothing against 50. He, he 50, us, 50, he 50 he, I'm good. not going to say 50. 50 did what was best us. for him. Which, no, he didn't stop us. 50, 50 did I'm good around, business. Bro, why you feel that way? Why you feel he that way? 50 nah, did, why you feel that way? 50 did good business. Yo, hold on. Let me ask you. You know 50? No, never. No, no, do I met him once. Okay, but do you know him? I like him, man. What does he owe you? What does he owe you? Nothing. All right, then. If he owes you nothing, then he did what was in his best interest, which is right. the nature of business. Because right. that's it go through. Right back you, to where we started. You, exactly. Right back to where we started. You get what I'm saying? The nature of business is it's, to make the best deal yo, bro, for you, regardless the nature of, of business. Else. The nature of business yeah, yeah, is to get as much from you as possible while Without giving you as little as possible. That's that is the nature of business. Both sides are supposed to be. Of doing course. How much they pay 50 to um keep power going? Yo, bro. It was first, like a hundred million right. or something. No, that's bullshit. That must get? That, I don't I think it was bro. Yo, bro, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. We don't know that. It was though. 50. 50. No, no, no. Let's not speculate. Yeah. No numbers. Unless one of y'all got Google open right now. I want to hear it. 50's an executive producer. Right? an executive producer. Right? Right. I can guarantee you. Those figures are wrong. I, I can't tell you what 50, 50 made. He posted it. He said he made 17,000. I can Google Thank that. you. 17,000 yes. per episode. He per episode, 50 an executive. Lying. Exec no, he's per not. Lying. <laughs> Yo, bro, 50's not a creator. He's not a writer. He has no input creatively, bro. He's an executive producer. Bro, say, he's a figurehead. Know, he's the face of it. Fuck 50. I need no, nah, it's not. Don't say that, bro. Yo, bro. Yo, bro. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen. 
The purpose of this conversation is for all those that come after us to understand the mistakes that we made so that they can learn (laughs) Learn from it. So that because because I'll tell you this, especially with us being in this space, I realize how much of the audience doesn't understand the business of this. So for me, the purpose of this conversation is to explain the business so that those that are sitting back can say, oh, wow. So now I understand why it took place the the way that it did. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that, that's so, so everything fell through the stars. What happened with Lionsgate? Um, all right. So Lionsgate put up two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, right? Mm. Um, at the end of season one, because when they came, all I was interested in is I want to produce season two. They put up two hundred and fifty grand to put towards season two. I took that money and I gave it straight to a production company to shoot the second season. And then on top of that. Uh, I had $120,000 from Title because I worked out a deal with Jay to put Money and Violence on Title the first week. It wasn't exclusive. And then I could put it on YouTube. And then on top of that, I did the crowdfunding campaign. Season two cost us $435,000, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. all together, when you add that up, I still had to come out of my pocket thirty grand to make right. that happen. Right. But because Lionsgate put up that $250,000, a lot of people don't understand how business works. An investor doesn't just hand you money. He has to have a a ROI, a return of investment. Their return of investment was, um, they put in 250 plus they they invested 75,000 on marketing and promotion when we did the digital release. So they were supposed to receive 325 plus 10% profit. And the way that they were supposed to get that was they could exploit season one Mm -hmm. and season two. So for the past six or seven years, I'm sure everybody's seen on Amazon, you could buy season one, season two on Voodoo and all these other platforms. That None of that money came to me. All that shit went to Lionsgate. Mm-hmm. Because that's how they were supposed to make their ROI, their return on investment. Right. You know, so they had the distribution rights to money and violence for the past six or seven years. Right now, me and my attorney is working it out because I think now they've made their money back. So we're working it out for the rights to be reverted. How did the title situation happen? The title situation was great, bro. That was a beautiful thing. Like, that was literally just, um, my managers, uh, Chris Styles and uh, Teddy Altafar and Charles Suit. Teddy had a relationship with um, right. with Rockefeller because he had been with Rockefeller from the beginning. Right. You know, so he took us to Shaka Pilgrim. Um, Jay Shout liked the Shaka. Jay liked the show. Shout out to my man Rodolfo, my man Fats. Because Rodolfo was a childhood friend of Jay, but Rodolfo was also somebody that, you know, I used to deal with in the streets years back, way before the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Tata put Jay on the money of violence. Jay watched it and loved it. Sat in the office for a while. Yeah, loved it. Jay loved it. You know, and, and it's so crazy because all Jay kept, or, or when I met Jay, all he kept saying was, yo, bro, when I watched the show, it reminded me of us. You know what I'm saying? Before we, we started doing music, when we was in the streets doing our thing. Um, so Jay was like, look, man, we got title and, uh, we want to give, we want to offer y'all to be the first original content, video content on title. I thought that was, for me, I thought it was great. It wasn't about the money. It was just about establishing the relationship because I understood the importance of relationships. Right. So when I went to Lionsgate, like I want to do title, Lionsgate was supposed to give me 350. They said, look, if you do the title thing, we're taking a hundred thousand dollars off off the table. And they did that because they didn't want me fucking with title. And I was like, look, to me, the relationship is that important. Y'all can take the hundred grand off. I'm still doing it. Hmm. And I did it. So they ended up giving me 250. Um, me and Jay had a one page agreement. It was literally, he didn't want no creative control. He didn't want no ownership. It was just, just give us exclusivity for one week. When the episode comes out, let it be on title and title only for seven days. And then after that, you can put it on YouTube. You can put it wherever you want. To be honest with you, it was a throwaway. Like Jay said, yo, bro, I appreciate that y'all are from Brooklyn. Y'all trying to do y'all thing. I love what y'all what y'all are doing. So, you know, let me give y'all an opportunity. Big Brooklyn. Yes, uh, right there. Uh, uh, Brooklyn right there. That's fire. That's what's up. Solid. That's what's up. Definitely. Man. So so now where where do you stand as far as like the business and, and what's happening, the new seasons? So now, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> That's where we at. at. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> where we at right now is um, we re-releasing seasons one and two on Tubi, right? 
Now, I thought long and hard before I did this. Um, I did this for so many different reasons, man. I did this because, once again, I think the show is very important to the culture. Right. Right? I think the show is necessary, man. I I, I do so much. Um, but I also did it simply because, you know, Tubi's free. Um, I also did it, once again, because it's going to put us in position. People have been asking us for a season three for the past six or seven years. You know, the campaign is get money and violence to number one on Tubi. Because if we're number one on Tubi, it's going to put us in position to give people the season three that they've been right. asking for. Which is something, trust me, like y'all think, y'all really think we came this far to only come this far? And when I say that, y'all really think we don't want to give y'all that? Like, we yeah. want to, but yo, bro, I'm tired of doing it out of my pocket. It doesn't... It doesn't make sense, bro. I have a family. I have kids to take care of. And it's not even that I'm saying it's about the money, but it is also about the money. I'm not going to continue. Yo, bro, that's called hustling backwards. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep copping work and then end up having to flush it. Nobody's buying it. And I'm going to sit on this shit till it go bad. Like, nah, yeah, bro, that makes no right. sense. Right, right. That makes no sense. And, and this is what I need the people to realize. Well, yeah. I want to say... This off the rip. I love what you guys created. And if there's any way that I can contribute, let me know. All right. Let's let's you, that. That. Hold on. Hold on. Nah, let's let's talk business. Yeah. We're going to do that over here. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do that over here. 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 Yeah. Yo, Pop. I'll be down, son. He's been drinking and you haven't. Talk business now. I'm talking. I'm talking. I'm fucking with that. That cup ain't moved. I'm fucking with that. Matt, I'm fucking with that. <laughs> he said I can't <laughs> No, we need to be Love, in season man. three. No, but, you know what? but you know what? But you know what? And I want I want I want I want to say this, right? Goddamn it, I want to say this. <laughs> you know, you know, you know what I love about this right here? Yo, bro. Me and Math met in Cross, we met in passing years ago. Right. Right? We bumping each other at the studio, out of the studio with wood. It was love, bro. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I reached out to him when we was doing this. It was simply, yo, man, boom, this is what we doing. We trying to get this on to be like, all right, come through. And I say that to say, don't get me wrong, right? Because a lot of times people have this entitlement. <laughs> and I hate fucking entitlement. Right. If I didn't have something that I thought that I can bring to the platform, bro, I wouldn't even hit you up. If I didn't have a conversation to have with y'all, right, I wouldn't even brought nothing up. But I just need us to understand that at the end of the day, we have more things in common than we have apart, mm -hmm. right? The stage is big enough for all of us, right? This imaginary competition that some of us have in our fucking heads doesn't even fucking exist, yeah. bro. Yeah. We can do more together than we can apart. I am not a threat to you. You are not a threat to me. The stage is big enough for every last fucking one of us. It's a fact. Yo, and I cannot stress this point enough. Mm. Like, like, I'm so tired of niggas in their imaginary competition. Like, yeah. I, yo, bro, I, I don't even know how to express this in, in any clearer words. Like, I don't know. All I can say is love feels so much better than hate, man. Yes, it does. That's it. That's it. Right. That's That's so you guys on Tubi now? Yeah. Yo, we on Tubi, late September. Go check that out. Run them numbers up. See, huh? Run them number, run them numbers up so that way we can get into a situation to put season three in play. Y'all wanted season three for six or seven years. This is our opportunity. It is now in our hands and not no one else's. Run these numbers up on Tubi. Get us the number one, and we'll be in we'll be in position to put season three in play, man. Look, we want to give it to y'all. Now it's up to y'all to show that y'all want it.
Yo, Mo. Support it. Run it up. 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 Mo. Run it up. Theme song. You had a theme song on mm. Money and Violence 1 that everybody fuck with. The Money yeah. and Violence joint. Yeah. Is it a reason why Ben Vito is not on the season two? Yeah. Of Yeah. Um, the situation that happened with Bam was all right. So me and Yah took Bam to the studio, paid for studio time, whatever, whatever. Bam um produced the sh- uh the song for season one. Fine. No problem. Um, then when season two was coming, when the Lionsgate situation happened, Bam said he wanted to get paid for the song. I said, Bam, niggas ain't got no bread to put towards this song. Like, ain't nobody else getting paid. You understand what I'm saying? Um, but you know, a lot of times people equate attention to money. Yeah. To they success. equate views to success. No, because because the views are success to right. to a degree to a degree to a degree right mm-hmm. but they equate the views to money mm-hmm. when that's not always true you you know um so I told him like yo bro like you know niggas ain't making nothing bro and I told everyone yo the money play is after season two when we get the television just hold off my, my nigga we're good once we get the TV we're using that song. For the show, bro. What you gonna get as far as licensing, you'll be good. Mm-hmm. Nah, nigga. You can't use the song unless you pay me. Alright, alright, alright. You wanna be paid? And I told him this face. I'll pay you, but I'm gonna pay you to not use this song. <laughs> That's it. I gave him three grand, right? And the reality of the situation is, I gave him three grand. His managers took 50%. No, his managers took 20%. So that brought it down to 2400 The producer took 50% of that. No, he took 50% of the 3000 which is 1500 So he ended up he ended up with a couple of hundred dollars. It sounds like with he ended up, money excel. So did he ended up have a sit. falling out after that? Mm. Was it a falling out after that? Uh, Listen, that the falling out during? It's, 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 not, it's not, for me, it's not a falling out. Right. Because, yo, listen, bro. You showed your hand. Listen, for me, it's not a falling out because, first of all, Bam was never my man, bro. Oh, okay, okay. Bam was a dude that y'all said, yo, my little nigga can rap, whatever, whatever. All right, my nigga, have him do the theme song. It's fine. Right. You understand what I'm saying? You presented him opportunities. Yeah, we presented- None of that is personal. It's not personal None of that for was me. Personal. That was all business. That's all business. Here's what you want to do. Okay, here's all right, what I want to do. I'm going to give you what you're asking for, but, but, now this but just happening. take what comes with it. Yeah, that's all business. That's all business. You understand what I'm saying? Um, But at the end of the day, like, bro, none of this shit is personal for me. Right, right. None of it. And none of it is personal for me, bro. Like, all right, you, you want this money? I'm going to give you this money. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to move accordingly from there. Mm-hmm. I think people kind of, um, there's a lot of numbers boosting. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've seen people do this for years. I've been hearing about uh, podcast deals or record deals or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you get inside those offices and you find out exactly what the number was or what it broke down to. And people on the outside, they don't know the business. Like you said, they don't know the business. So they don't know how much money this actually is. You know what I mean? You hear somebody got, oh, this person got a $100 million deal over the span of how much time mm-hmm. and how many people had a part to play. Yeah. They don't think about that. They just yeah. think somebody just wrote you a $100 million check. Yeah, is it here? But I'm going to say this. But I'm going to say this. You know what I mean? Like, but, I, but I'm going to also <laughs> say this. But what doesn't help in my case, like, you got the dude that played Mr. that I saw do an interview that said he was in the office with me and Jay-Z. Jay-Z handed me a million dollar check and I said no. And then Jay-Z wrote a two million dollar check and gave it to me. Mm-hmm. Where does that happen at, bro? <laughs> Yo, the crazy <laughs> thing about that, like, right? Like, dudes who have never it, it, in the, room. the crazy thing about it that doesn't happen. I just, just recently you know. seen him, right? And, he's, and, I, and I asked him about it. And he said, Yo, don't beat me up. I was just playing. You know, it's all. He said the saying. same thing when you saw yeah. him. He's like, oh, oh, you saw him too? All this is a just I saw him in too. character. I saw him too. <laughs> he I'm said, like, bro, the internet said, don't take 
So like, and I was only lying. It's all and, a game. And, I, and, I just and, was and, trying to get attention. And I'm gonna say this. That's corny. And I'm gonna say this. And I'm gonna say this. And I'm gonna say this. That's corny. And I'm gonna say this. I was just playing. And I'm the reason. The reason I don't fuck with dudes is because, by the grace of God, I'm me. I may not carry myself that way. I'm me, right? And dudes know. All right, take your chances and come at me, bro. That's that's the reality. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I'm everywhere. Niggas know that. I go where I want, when I want. You want to roll the dice, roll the dice. But because of that, no one has come at me. But, bro, y'all putting out all these stories, and these people are so attached. My nigga, I've seen it happen. Yo, bro, y'all literally put me in a situation for my freedom to be challenged, bro. Mm -hmm. And And... And what's sad is y'all know me. Y'all know what lengths it's gonna go to. So y'all playing with my freedom. But this is the thing. Yeah. I think that those people who 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 kind of step into that that role, knowing the, the consequences or possibilities, or whatever. These are people who who have an obsession with the with the attention, with the fame, attention holes. Like attention needles. you do something to them, or you don't do something nah. to them. But I'm, but I'm saying, if something does happen, that's to not them, what. That, this is what I'm saying. It's gonna be all. But that's, but that's, but that's not what I mean. It's good, they, those what I mean, are, these are the people who who what, turn on the camera and be like, see, but yo, they I'm got not, me, y'all. I'm not. But I'm <laughs> not. They got me, y'all. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm still standing, though. But I, I, I got two teeth left. Yo, man. <laughs> what am I? What I'm referring to. What I'm referring to isn't them. Let me tell you something about me. The worst thing you can ever do is make me feel threatened because I don't play defense. I don't believe in that. I'm not going to sit back and wait. Like, that's that's just not me. But what I mean, it's not them. They're not a threat, my nigga. That's why I've been sitting back for the past seven years not caring. Mm -hmm. What I'm talking about is all the people who love the show. show. You have so many it. fanatics these days, mm -hmm. bro. So when you're saying all of these things... Yo, bro, you you don't know what fanatic is sitting in his. Oh, wait till I see this nigga. Mm -hmm. yeah. You you understand what I'm? This is what I'm speaking. Fan, of. Fan, I'm not fan fan is short I want to see if nigga really yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh, and I'm like. Yeah. That. No, I'm saying. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not talking about what you're saying. I'm not talking about what you're saying. What I'm saying is like, yo, bro, like, y'all, like, yo, bro, I don't, I don't fell back and just because, because one, one thing I know. Hanging around gangsters, you get caught up in gangster consequences. Right. And this is why, once again, like I said, five years ago, my daughter's mother died. My 13-year-old daughter came to live with me, my nigga. I have, I, I can't afford to put my freedom of the life on, on my life on the line no more because I'm all this little girl has. Mm -hmm. You understand? So when I see, but in the same breath, nigga, you crazy if you think I'm going to just let a nigga come take my life. Mm -hmm. Because... I may have locked that monster away in a cage, but believe that nigga's still there, bro. Don't kick the cage. Mm -hmm. Still got the cage. And this, yo, my nigga. <laughs> and this is key. why <laughs> this is why I stay away from bullshit because I know me. Listen, and man. I don't. I preach to the choir. Yeah, preach to the choir, my nigga. This is why <laughs> I stay. <laughs> this is why I stay away <laughs> from bullshit. <laughs> this is why niggas will tell you if I'm not handling the it's nigga, I'm back. home. I'm home. Why? Because I'm not putting myself in a position to be around niggas. And then, you know, now I feel threatened. And now, nigga, I ain't got no choice. All right, so let, let's take a turn, man. Let's take, take a turn to the positive. What That's do you still feel, positive. What do you feel like were the best scenes that came out of the money? Oh, man. Can I say my best one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we, we go down the, the line. Let's five. go down the line. Let's go oh, down the, the line. Top five. I want my best scenes. This is a negative and positive. <laughs> Money and violence, <laughs> loosely based on these people around us, right? Right. Oh, two p.m. Flatbush, middle of y'all remember really Flatbush happened. on two p.m. Junction? Yeah. Flatbush, no, no yeah. sense. Yeah. That really happened. Picture right. it. Right. Hundreds of people getting on the bus. Trail. That wasn't a scene. Right. That wasn't. That was it was about to be a scene. It was a scene though. That's my. We favorite were shooting scene. the scene. But it was still shot. It. Hold on. Let me that get was to a the, scene. Hold on. Let me get to the negative <laughs> and the positive. Somebody's drunk on set, acting up. We stand on principles. They person some lady out. They was cursing lady with her daughter. Her daughter out. We're like, like, we're not like that. Yo, my man. nigga, what are you doing? It turns into. Yo, a, hold on, hold on. It turns into a little. 
boom, somebody gets shot you on got scene. Shot. You got shot a because you know why? On scene. This wow. is real life money and violence. Switch <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. clothes, take the character to the hospital and shoot that scene. And then and then shoot that scene. Y'all went to the hospital, came back. No, I put, him, I put him in a cab. Nigga. He had to go. He had to go. Go to the fucking hospital because that reason, dumb shit you was doing. The reason why that's my favorite scene is because when we acted out the well, scene, man. it felt so real because... That nigga just of what shot. just happened. Dude, he, he just got, got shot. shot. It happened after. I was doing. He got shot. Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. And yo, allegedly. 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 No more, no more liquor for this nigga, you know? It was so real. It was so real because <laughs> at that moment, I'm like, yo, this is real. It was, <laughs> no, like, but I'm, but I'm going to tell you why it was real. It wasn't real because he got shot. It was real because it was about no, principle. principle. It was about him disrespecting that woman and, and her daughter, my nigga. Yeah. Yo, my nigga, what the fuck oh. is you doing? Could have shot that nigga too. What you doing, bro? Allegedly. 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 But but it's about Allegedly. it's about yo, bro. What are you doing? <laughs> what? Like, come on, my nigga. We don't move like that. You know. And he started back talking. I right, hold that. Wow. Quick, quick, Next hold scene. That. What was Quick the next man. scene that was your favorite? Move on. <laughs> Hold on. Besides, the, besides the next scene, I got to shout my son out. Today is his birthday. He just shout turned three. Shout out. 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 My favorite scene was actually in the season finale of um, episode one, when Shooter Shane just found out that Grammy Ta was the nigga that had set him up. Mm-hmm. And he went in the building talking to Miz, and he was telling Miz how Grammy Ta know that he killed his cousin. And Miz was like, how does he know? And he said, I told him. And he said, my nigga, why would you tell him? Mm-hmm. There's no statute of limitations on murder, bro. You know what I mean? There's certain things that you do in life you never tell anyone. He's like, I don't care if it was me, if it was your father. Um, and the reason that was my favorite scene, once again, is just because, like I said, money and violence was to teach. And I know some will look at it as it's teaching negative, right? But the truth is there are so many of our young boys that grow up in these environments that don't know how to navigate themselves. And we were just trying to get them a roadmap, not justifying Right. The wrong, but, but just if you're doing wrong, then know how to move. But a lot of people, but not not just know how to move, because some of these young boys they they get into this lifestyle, and they see it's not what it is, and they want an out, just to protect your out. Right. That's a good. That was a good scene yeah. for yeah. protecting. Your yeah, for protecting out. your out. Yeah. But, right. but a lot of a lot of younger, the younger generation, a lot of teens that watched the show came to me telling me that the show taught them a lot, especially with the gems that was dropped in the dialogue. Yo, bro, I remember. See what I'm saying? I got People were reciting these, like, quotes to me. Like, yo, I'm like, oh. (laughs) Yo, I got a DM from a woman. I still remember this. This was probably, like, during the uh, the first season. I got a DM from a woman, and she said, I lost my son at 16 years old to gun violence. And she said, I just wanted to send you a message because I wish your show was out when he was alive because I feel it probably could have saved his life. Mm-hmm. You know, she said, um, I know that you're yeah. just out here telling the story of your life, but I need you to understand how important it is. You know, mm-hmm. and that that resonated with me. And to me, the greatest thing about Money and Violence was that the show was received exactly the way that I had intended it okay. to be because the show was never about the glorification of violence. Mm-hmm. The show was just about this is the reality of what goes on in our hoods. Right. This is the reality of the fact. Because if, if you paid attention to Money and Violence, bro, nobody was happy. Everybody was miserable. <laughs> only bro, the, only dude miserable. That was, the only dude that was happy was Joe, which was the dude with the nine to five. Right. Yo, yeah. I'm going to work, I'm getting my check. But it's not miserable. And the reason I did it that it's way miserable. was because, do you understand how miserable uncertainty is? Yeah. There is mm. nothing more that more that's torture than uncertainty. Yeah. And to wake up every day, where's my next dollar coming from? I don't even know if I'm going to be able to eat today, bro. That is torture. Anxiety. 
That's anxiety. Mm -hmm. And you're dealing with a bunch of characters that wake up every day not knowing where their next dollar's coming from. Mm -hmm. Not and still trying to balance, still trying to balance the love of their family, taking care of their family, taking care of their loved ones. You know, I've always said they misjudge us in the hood. They say we have all this hate. But the truth is, all these dudes in the hood have an insurmountable amount of love. All these dudes in the hood would do 25 years for their man, would die for their man. That's not hate, bro. That's love. It's just misplaced. It's mm -hmm. misplaced mm -hmm. because they don't know no better. You know? But yeah. Yo, Matt, why you acting like you wasn't one of them top niggas in the web series, nigga? Come on, man. Stop going, playing. Don't play, son. son. You was less. Come on, son. Respect life going crazy. He's in the three. You're all mad. Chill. I got, I, <laughs> I got killed in the corner store because I was hanging out with the wrong nigga. <laughs> Yo. Life lesson, bro. <laughs> Yo, and I and I just want I just want to say this man right here. He's a big time. I want to give this man. All, I want to give this man all the credit in the world, and I'm gonna tell you why. This man's character had to give a dude a piggyback ride. This man's character had to get sunned every single day. I remember we were shooting a scene. A dude drove by. He said, "Oh shit, Rafe, yo, Miz." Shoot the shade with up. Kane, you pussy. <laughs> in the middle of the <laughs> but, but I'm going to tell you what. what. This man here showed up every day of All every time. scene, nigga, giving me his 150%. At playing that character, mm -hmm. although everybody wanted to shoot somebody, mm -hmm. Every, he's like, I, he's like, Mo, if this is what you need, I got you, baby. And I'm like, Yo, my nigga, I got a vision down the line. He's going to turn up. It's just not right now. He's going through with your baby mama. I thought, I thought he was a liar. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell the truth. I was in North. <laughs> Hold on. They said we're gonna shoot a film. We talked about it. I, I do parties. So I went to North Carolina for. CIAA, I want to say is that, right? Yeah. So I'm out there partying, I come back, niggas already chose their characters. So I'm like, I'm reading the script, like, right? and he's like, yo, bro, trust me, I got you. I'm looking at him like, then the piggyback ride come. My pocket's getting ran. I'm getting ran down on in the streets for a rip. Bro. People thought this was a real show. They thought, yo, you know what <laughs> They grabbing my sweat. Yo, I'm talking about this, I'm putting this out there. Yo, bro, get off. You don't respect your jaw, like, yo, bro, this is it. So I'm, getting, I'm in Toronto, same thing. Houston, right. same thing. Right. Yo, he couldn't even get no bookings. No bookings. So I become the booking manager, right. book them, and I throw myself on the fly. You're like, yo, Kane, too, you know? They don't right. care about me, though. For season one, cool. Right. But I'm going to say, from the growth of Kane to season one to season two, yeah, though, was developing. I see the vision at the end. Everybody loved and, the growth. And you feel me? It's like, it's like, they was rooting for me. When we watched the season two season finale, Stage 48, and oh, bro, I could talk about one. this because I, sure I shot Mr. The whole club yo, went crazy. Yo, my nigga, you felt yeah. no shit. When this <laughs> walked out at the end after serving him the pa Son, you couldn't help but smack. Like, you felt it, bro. Right. Yeah. No, right. It was bro, club right. shook. We had a pack you understand? club in the <laughs> shook. But, I was there for but for me, the importance was, I wrote a book years ago. I wrote a book called Love Changes about oh. um my life from like 16 to like 19. And what Love Changes was, it was it was my journey from a child to the streets turning me out. And that was his thing. I needed the I needed the world to understand how an innocent young boy becomes a becomes a monster. Right. And what you have to understand with his development, it was never a decision. He just getting he just kept getting placed in positions and situations for that to come out of him. And that's what happens in the hood, right? Yeah, that's a fact. That's what happens in the hood is dudes get keep getting put in the situations where it's like either I lose my life or I perform. Either I lose my life, either my man dies, or I have to do. You know, and I always say this: we don't do what we want; we do what we have to, bro. And it's not that we even want to do it. 
That's a fact. But it's just you sitting there like, I can't let this can't. dude get away with Not it. No more. I can't. Yeah. And once you learn that you could do it. Oh, <laughs> ain't no turning back. Ain't no turning back, baby. Yo, Yo money hey, and violence, y'all. On. On. One last thing. One last thing. One last, one last thing. thing. What you saying that? I used to get bullied. I used to get bullied too. I, 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 I used to get bullied, to get bullied I mean, when I was like eight years old bullying. by the dude. I used to do the by bullying. the dude that missed his bass drum, right? There was there was a real Mister, yeah. right from my hood. I just I just got off the phone with him last week. He doing like twenty five, right? Right. And my brother told me the next time you let this nigga bully you, I'm busting your ass. And I remember my, my mother sent me to the store for some milk. I went to get the milk. I get in front of my building. This nigga's in front of there. Yo, what you got in your pockets? I look up, my brother's looking out the window, and I whooped the nigga ass. You understand? And it wasn't until I whooped his ass, I said, oh shit, I got fucked. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it was over from there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You understand? So with that said, Similar that's all. Stories. you never know who you are until you're faced in a situation to perform. Money and yeah. violence on yeah. QB yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Money yeah. Up. Money yeah. Money yeah. Money yeah. Smack rapper, only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars, I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends sleep earth, you heard. Got your baby mama thirst, you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to surf, you heard.